Spanish made, but with an international cast. This is arguably yet another loose adaptation of 1932's The Most Dangerous Game. But is this game worth playing? Or is it an EA cash grab clusterfuck? Yep, I went there. Filmed in the Amazon rainforest, it tells the story of an exclusive paintball experience. Brought in via helicopter, these random strangers are dropped into the forest to battle another team. But it quickly becomes apparent that the other team are equipped with a lot more than just paintball guns, and they must escape their captors. Okay, so not the worst concept, I thought. Again, it's a modernised version of the most dangerous game. It also gradually unravels into certain other elements. Some predictable and cliché, and another which was sound, however entirely illogical and went absolutely nowhere. Almost as if, halfway through the movie, the writers changed, and the new guy hadn't been told about that at all. It tries to be dark and gritty, takes advantage of filters which actually don't look entirely terrible, but the kills are piss poor. The characters are so interchangeable, I actually mixed them up several times. And it kind of fizzles out by, let's say, about the halfway mark. Now, of course, I didn't go in expecting to enjoy paintball. But early on, I found myself kind of wanting to. Sadly, the creators didn't make it easy for me. And by about a third of the way through, I sadly accepted that I wouldn't. You can do a lot worse than this, sure. But why try yourself with such a mediocre movie? Go watch one of the many Most Dangerous Game adaptations, or just watch the 1932 original, and I assure you, you will have a better time than this. I award Paintball a 3 out of 10. Rant time. Potential spoilers ahead. Now, I used to be a huge contributor to IMDb. I stopped after having a personal fallout with IMDb CEO, Colm Neen. The man is a dick stain of the highest or perhaps lowest order, and an overly sensitive little bitch. But this rant isn't about him. It's about the incompetence of his staff. They're supposed to check and monitor contributions. Yet they don't, and since many of mine went through instantly, that confirms it. IMDB is full of incorrect data, baffling frequently asked questions, one-line reviews that even admit they haven't seen the film, and so many other problems, and here is no different. Going to the Connections tab, I checked out the Reference sections. I'm sure you can work out what this is for when a movie makes direct reference to another film. So what did the IMDB staff authorise? Let's have a look. It references Friday the 13th Part 2 from 1981 because John is caught in a trap and hung upside down from a tree branch before being killed. Hmm. That's a reference, is it? Okay, let's have another one. Uh, one. Uh, Predator 1987. The characters are pursued by an unseen hunter and his victims are seen being killed from his point of view, which is thermal imagery. Again, that's a comparison. That's not a reference. Okay. Uh, Saw 2004. When the official is speaking to Anna over the walkie-talkie, she says she does not care who lives or dies and that it's all a game of survival. For fuck's sake, how is that a reference? Okay, one more. Hostel 2005. When one of the men watching the events unfold complains, he is told that he pays to see death, as the customers in the film do. So in other words, the IMDB staff, I'm sure they had a degree of training here, weren't explained to exactly what a reference is. If a character had actually spoken of Friday the 13th Part 2, reference something which had happened in the movie, that is a reference. Just saying, oh, well, something in the film happened and it was a bit like the other film isn't. You dumb fucks. I don't know what IMDb staff are paid, but it's too much. Oh, and um, Cole Needham, buddy, pal, fuck you. 
So, what did you think of paintball? What would you have done in their position? What do you think of IMDB and its staff? Tell me in the comments below, like this video, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Later, folks.